Okay, it's day 107. This is part three. And uh, I got to thinking about the title that I put on this. I, I made sure that I, in the retraction uh, for Macduff, I put no Nazi houses, no Nazi houses, only Nazi method, only Nazi method. And um, I started thinking about it and said, well, wait a minute, there were Nazi houses. Uh, now, Macduff didn't go to any of them. So that's the part of the story I had wrong. But maybe there is something here in the houses that I should talk about because I've had a lot of personal experience with this with the Awans and the Awans houses and also uh, which I'll just call safe houses for right now and then I was in Australia where in Perth Australia there was a lot of people that were uh, exiting from South Africa when that was falling to Perth and how these houses were created now in that case they were welcomed in open arms but sometimes uh, when they are leaving Europe, they were had to travel incognito with uh, passports with different names, as Heinrich Müller did, um, and he went to Panama. But a lot of them did go to South Africa and picked up right where they left off. The thing about uh, this series, it really shows going back all the way to Congo, uh, how strategic these resources were for uranium all the way back then, and really determined the outcome because there was people that had gone to Africa it determined the outcome of the Second World War. Now it just so happens we had a Belgian guy that was working with uh, the US forces and we got most of that uranium and we put it under uh, the Bayonne Bridge and you can even almost see the discoloration of the Bayonne Bridge under the, uh, the steel stanchions there where they stored that incredibly uh, rich pitch blend uranium underneath in New Jersey and that really kind of determined really at the end if you want to look at the final uh, atomic bomb determined the whole structure of the war and that same thinking that same thinking about this whole nuclear fuel chain going all the way back to the ore okay all the way back to the ore is what is controlled potentially the the 20 years that we've had of megatons to megawatts and the storing of that HEU and the reason why we need to lie to the American people the reason why we need to do Smith month and also, it explains Uranium One. So this is why I'm kind of I'm moving away gradually of blaming just Hillary and the conspirators and the Comeys and so forth. It really is this kind of Mueller uh, kind of phenomenon. It's this thinking that the, the opinion of the American public, they cannot know the truth. That we have to wag the dog. They can't know the truth. You can't handle the truth. We have to wag the dog. They, need to, they don't understand how Shinka Lobwe change the course of history. We can't let Shinka Loboy happen again. Um, and you can see this happening with both megatons to megawatts with the uranium and how it's handled after World War, uh, after uh, the fall of the Soviet Union, and then you could see it happening again with Uranium One. We can't let these farmers and these ranchers, just because they farmed and ranched something for six generations, they weren't miners, they didn't know it was there, we have to get them off this land. So this really uh, informs, I think, the events, the, the, this uh, substrate here of what really is happening politically with the FBI. It, it tells you and informs you why the FBI acted as they did. Americans, ranchers and, uh, ranchers and cattlemen and, and, and farmers see it as, why is the government, why is the FBI? the vaunted FBI coming after me, coming after my land to take my land. They're shooting me. They're saying I had weapons when I didn't have any weapons. They're raiding me and they're, and they're denying me the film of that raid, you know, in, in the Bundy situation. Finicum, they're, you know, you're saying just shoot me and they don't, they don't even have the courtesy to shoot you face on. They shoot you in the back when you're unarmed. This is the, the conundrum of the American people now that they've seen this film. Now, I put out the Finnegan film that the Oregonian had published, and now people have uh, interviewed the, uh, the Bundys now. Jason did a good film, I think, where he interviewed the Bundys. So this is where we are kind of understanding it's not really the FBI. It's these Mueller kids. It's these Mueller kids. Mueller and these Mueller kids that are doing this, you know, uh, confiscation. So I started thinking about, you know, the, the Awans and how the Awans was really just an extension. The Awans are just an extension. The whole Bob Mueller thing that he did here 20 years ago with the Awans and bringing P-Tech in, those were just like in other cases where they used the Italians to get them passports. You know, they used, uh, there was a guy named Wolf. 
he was a paperclip scientist and he ran he ended up running East German uh, intelligence until uh, the fall of East Germany and the fall of the of uh, Soviet Union um, they went to the Vatican to get those Knights of Malta passports they needed the passports so it's whatever is needed whatever is needed at whatever time they needed programmers they needed people to get in and take over the backbone the dying core backbone to get all the passwords to get in control where they could you know take over this land they they see this uranium out there as this strategic resource these farmers are deplorable they cannot have this land that's an attempt at at propaganda that we're now we're finding out as individuals with cell phones we're finding out oh wait a minute the BLM did do a raid and, and without any warrant. They did ransack them and illegally put the Bundys in prison. Oh my gosh, this actually happened in our government. They did shoot Lloyd Finnegan in the back. He was asking them to shoot him face first because his life had been destroyed and they didn't have the courtesy to do that and they shot him in the back. That's what America is realizing right now. This FISA is just the latest example of you came out with all these lies about all these secrets that were in this document. It turned out when the thing came out, it was a very uh, innocuous, almost back page Sunday article in the New York Times that just basically laid out the facts. You did four FISAs, you had six different conspirators inside the government, you did setup after setup after setup of Trump that didn't work, and it was just a, a series of four failed coups. And, and that is... I think for both sides, an understanding of who is Mueller, who are the Mueller kids, what is this thinking that's been infiltrated into the top of our most vaunted uh, law enforcement agency. We need to understand that, and they're thinking all the way back to Orr, all the way back to Orr. Now, as I don't know if Nellie Orr and Bruce Orr are named Orr for that reason, but you can see the thinking of why I brought in all these Saipov truckers, why I brought in all these Krupniks. The American people can't be trusted. You can't be trusted with this. There is some American that's going to be driving that uranium around going, why am I driving around uranium from Wyoming from some rancher out to, you know, this boat here in Charleston? That doesn't make any sense. Somebody's going to have a pang of conscience. We can't take that risk. Let's bring in the Saipov truckers. Same thing with the Krupnik crushers and the people working out there. We can't have miners out here or people making decisions, buying and selling uranium and, and where it's being enriched. That can't be left to the common man, these people in Ohio and these people later in Kentucky. We need to take that and secretly do that with people in New Mexico, near the New Mexico border. Who knows where they're getting those people that ended up working in those in that uranium spinning down there in Eunice, New Mexico. This is now an opportunity that the American people are actually seeing these, this Mueller thinking and this Mueller, these Mueller kids for what they are. And it's a beautiful thing in a way until you end up, you know, being <laughs> under a railroad train. But uh, that's what I think is happening here. So in, in a sense, as I always say, these mistakes, these corrections always lead to more clarity, more clarity in the situation that, hey, the, the Awans were just doing what they were told. They were just being good soldiers doing what they were told. I can guarantee at the end of this cycle we're going to find out that Andy McCabe recruited the Awans. You're going to find him in mosque after mosque doing recruiting events for Bob Mueller.